Hello again. We're, uh, well, I'm back again for uh, another 6,000 reading. Now, <clears throat> I was uh, I was looking at uh, all of the entries and the time frame, and I'm not going to have enough time to read every entry one by one, at least like every day. And I'm not even going to be uh, home this weekend. I'm uh, so what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reload to get all the new entries in. <sighs> There's a lot. Uh, so I think it'd be pretty good to get ones I want to read out of the way. Like Dr. Ekimoto wrote the, uh, the, the one about the, the giant lobster. Found that one funny. Uh, Zin, you know head moderator, but the one I was thinking about reading today was Ronderhaus. It's because I've heard good things about Ronderhaus. People have been saying that uh, he w that he Ronderhaus and DJ Cactus are the two, you know, the, the two that are probably going to win. I really like DJ Cactus's stuff, but uh, his thing had an error and uh, hasn't and couldn't be submitted. So I hope he fixes it, but yeah, we will be, today, I will be reading SCP-6000, The Serpent, the Moose, and the Wanderer's Library. All right. It's the highest rated one on the, uh, in the contest. Okay. By order of the Overseer Council, the following file is level 4, 6,000 classified. Unauthorized access is forbidden. Submit for retinal ID confirmation. Welcome back, Director Moose. Notice from Foundation's Record and Information Security Administration. The following two revisions were found in the SCP-6000 slot when it was automatically pre-generated as an empty placeholder by SkipNet on June 25th, 2022. No file history was available. Due to the... Content therein and the questionable circumstances of its discovery, the O5 Council has elected to leave this file unaltered. None of the events that followed have occurred. The coordinates listed as the location of SCP-6000 contain nothing of note. Maria Jones, Director of Reza. All right, SCP-6000, Revision 235, January 7th, 2030. The Serpent, the Moose, and the Wanderer's Library. Project Fusilad, SCP Foundation Global Occult Coalition Joint Clearance File, Passcode, The Garden is the Serpent's Place, SCP, uh, wait, item number, SCP-6000, object class, Keter, level 4, 6000 classified, SCP-6000, 6000A, Special Containment Procedures, the current protocol regarding SCP-6000 to conceal is to conceal its existence by any means necessary. As the information arm of Project Fusilod, the Foundation resources are to be primarily dedicated to disinformation and concealment, while a permanent containment or destruction solution is, is devised. Any unauthorized individuals accessing the SCP-6000 exclusion zone are to be aggressively disincentivized. Further containment details can be found in Addendum 6000.3. 6003. I'm just going to say 6000. Point, uh, whatever. 6000.3. Description SCP 6000 is a massive dimensional ex extrusion centered at 2 degrees 9 minutes 47.1816 seconds south and 55 degrees 7 minutes. 35.9328 seconds west in the Amazon rainforest in Brazil. SCP-6000 represents the largest Class W transportation gateway, colloquially known as a way, ever encountered by the Foundation. SCP-6000 currently measures 19 kilometers from its northeast to southeast point. Northeast to southwest point, sorry. The area directly affected by SCP-6000's presence is significantly larger, and a temporary security perimeter has been established around the area at a diameter of 6 kilometers, designated the exclusion zone. 
SCP-6000 is growing at an unstable rate. Its presence has an adverse effect on the plant and animal life in the exclusion zone. The degree of this effect, along with the size of the, of the exclusion zone itself, increases proportionally with SCP-6000. SCP-6000-A is a sapient semi-ophidian organism discovered within the exclusion zone during initial reconnaissance of SCP-6000. See Addendum 6000.2. It was found in a comatose state surrounded by human corpses. SCP-6000-A's connection with SCP-6000 is under investigation. See addenda. SCP-6000 connects to the baseline reality, connects the baseline reality with the extra-dimensional location known as the Wanderer's Library. The Wanderer's Library was first encountered by the Foundation in 1955, but evidence suggests it has played a crucial part in the development of human civilization since at least the beginning of recorded history. See Addendum 6000.1. SCP-6000 first appeared on December 21st, 2030 on the summer solstice. Real-time satellite images of the Amazon of the Amazon rainforest suddenly displayed a significant visual anomaly and a reconnaissance team was deployed to inspect the area. 6000.1. One, addendum 6000.1. Wanderer's Library Debriefing The Wanderer's Library, designated NX-001, is an extra-dimensional Y-space compromised of a massive library of unclear size and boundaries which contains a potentially infinite amount of books, treatises, essays, and other forms of media and knowledge. Its collection purportedly covers the sum of all knowledge, but with a specific focus on elements of thaumaturgy and magic. The Foundation has been aware of the library since 1955 when a group of interest known as the Serpent's Hand inadvertently exposed the location to agents. The library is maintained by librarians, entities that range in size and shape but are typically heavily modified humanoids specialized to, service and specialized to the service and protection of NX-001. Those who break the rules of the library are subject to being transformed into librarians to work off their debt. The fate has befallen a number of Foundation personnel. NX-01 is closely connected to GOI-14, the Serpent's Hand. The Hand are known to use the library as a meeting and staging point for operations due to the relative safe safety it offers. Numerous attempts have been made by Foundation and GOC forces to penetrate into the library, but almost all have failed. The Foundation, along with the GOC and Chaos Insurgency, were originally barred from the library due to the library's opinion on those who attempt to suppress the abnormal, but in recent years have relaxed their stance. Site-19 director Tilda Moose has extensive experience with the Wanderer's Library and the Serpent's Hand as a former Type Blue entity and has been given spe several security briefings on this topic. Begin excerpt. Moose. Extra-dimensional is the technical term though not very descriptive. The library isn't on our world, though it's connected to it. You reach it through ways. Ways are basically a network of magic portals that take you from one place to another. They're scattered all around the world. A way can be anything you can picture as a door, or anything like a door, a cave, an archway, the back of a truck. Some of them are just art pieces. I once used a picture of a door to enter the library back when I still could. Ah, yes. I used to be a library go goer. That was a long time ago, though. Back when I ran with other groups. Yeah, it's, I suppose, otherworldly. Otherworldly is the best word for it. Nothing quite compares. The architecture and decorations are, well, they're not alive, but they're mutable, always changing. When I frequented, the place was on an art deco kick. You could look up and see constellations on a false ceiling. That all ended when I joined the Foundation, though. The library doesn't like us. At least, n n to say the least. Especially not me. No, I wouldn't like to talk about it. Moving on. Addendum 6000.2. Initial Encounters. Unexplained Event Report. Location, Amazon Basin, Brazil. 2 degrees, 9 minutes, 47.1816... 2 degrees 9 minutes 47.1816 seconds south and 50 degrees 7 minutes and 35.9328 seconds west. Status ongoing time 11 a, 11.49 a.m. local time to June wait 
11.49 a.m. local time, June 21st to present. Disruption class, Connect. Event summary, large visual and spatial anomaly, 0 0.5 kilometers in length, resembling an iridescent rip in space. Nearby flora and fauna altered in shape, color, composition, and size, increasing in alteration by proximity to anomaly. Long-range visual surveillance suggested it is a way leading to the library, but significantly larger than any previous encountered. Physical confirmation required. Suggest immediate containment team and specialized detachment of MTF Sigma-3. Edit, it's really beautiful, you know. Communication from the three-man reconnaissance team ceased after this transmission. A rescon team and a fire team from MTF Sigma-3, the bibliographers, were immediately deployed to the location. They found the surveillance team equipment and supplies, but none of the three members. Tracks leading away from the site indicated that they had gone to what is now the exclusion zone. While searching for the missing reconnaissance team, personnel discovered the corpses of 12 unknown individuals dressed in robes at the foot of a thaumaturgic ritual circle. At the center of the circle was SCP-6000-A, coiled and in a comatose state. The entity was quickly airlifted into containment at Facility 57. On the interim, one of the fire teams was outfitted for an expedition into SCP-6000. Due to her extensive experience with NX-001, Waze, and the Serpent's Hand, Director Moose was flown in from Facility 57, where she was on an administrative visit to accompany the fire team. That's the Chicago team, I guess. MTF, Sigma-3, Bibliographers, Fire Team Chicago, Chicago-1, Adam McMillian, Chicago-2, Tilda Moose, Chicago-3, Neyra Flores, Chicago-4, Esteban Bardem. Begin log. Uh, gotta think of voices. Sorry. Beginning approach to SCP-6000. No sign of the recon team. Copy that. Wait. You guys hear something? It's coming from the anomaly. You're still a click and a half out, Chicago. Copy. Keep moving. Chicago continues to advance through the jungle. There, There's something wrong with the air, Command. It's all shimmery, like an oil slick. It's like an oil sheen on the plants. I've never seen anything quite like it. Taking sample photos. Look at this. A large portion of the tree trunk, extending several dozen feet high, has been transfigured into a bookshelf. There are no books present. When did that happen? It's still happening. Look! The trees immediately nearby are undergoing the same process as the bark and wood disintegrate to form natural bookshelves. This definitely isn't a normal way. Eyes up, folks. We're about to break over the ridge, Command. Copy that, Chicago. You are clear. Holy crap. Hold on. Chicago 1 adjusts his body camera. A large swath of the forest has completely disappeared and has been replaced with a large cut in space leading into an empty wing of NX-001. No books are on the massive shelves and no entities are visible inside. That's empty. That's new. What the heck? Weird. Command. Permission to investigate? Stand by. Permission granted, but two is going to have to stay outside. Don't want to risk pissing him off. Of course. Roger. Chicago 3 shrugs off her assault rifle and sidearm, laying them on the ground. Ch Chicago 2 draws her handgun. Chicago advances into the clearing, their boots clunking. Huh. Chicago 1 kicks the dirt on the ground. His boot hits something hard. It's hardwood, just covered by dirt. What the frick is going on here? Chicago approaches SCP-6000's edge, looking inside. Hello? Is anyone there? Permission to move in, Command? Permission granted. Be careful. Chicago steps through SCP-6000, arriving on the other side. Chicago 2 remains on the Earth side. Command, you read? Loud and clear. Anything? It's totally empty. I don't like this. This place feels... different from the library. I thought it was just me. No, it's definitely different. Look at the ceiling. There's no roof. It's just dark. The shelves are unvarnished. It's unfinished. I didn't realize that could happen. D 
distantly, a large noise is audible. Chicago ad adopts a defensive position. Oh, shoot. A massive red millipede passes two shelves ahead, ignoring Chicago. It's pincer skitter. Archivist. Command, please advise. You are authorized to attempt to peacefully engage. Air support has been scrambled from facility 67. From facility 57. <laughs> as backup. Copy. Hey. Hello. Entity turns to Chicago and screeches, slamming its pincers together. A feminine hiss is heard. I see your intentions. Be gone. That's what I imagine millipedes to sound like if they could talk. Uh, several class three librarian entities clamber over the tops of nearby shelves. They are all humanoid arachnids with elongated bodies, four eyes, and additional limbs. They wear the uniform of the reconnaissance team. Oh, Jesus. Hey, we've done nothing wrong. We haven't broken the rules. What? What is this? The librarians begin to descend the shelves and are advancing. Chicago begins to move backwards, closer to SCP-6000. Guys, pull out! Now, go! Chicago turns around to run towards SCP-6000, several dozen meters away. The librarians drop onto the ground and lope along in pursuit, considerably faster, but farther away. One catches up to and tackles Chicago 4, bringing him to the ground. Chicago 2 draws her handgun from the other side and fires into NX-001. Frick, frick, help! Chicago 3 turns around and rushes to aid him, punching the librarian in the jaw. Several Class 2 librarian entities, hooded, hooded entities several meters high holding lanterns, round the corner. Chicago 3 turns to Chicago 1. What the frick are you waiting for? Run! Chicago 1 turns and runs with librarians less than a meter behind him, throwing himself through SCP-6000 as two AH-1Z Vipers from MTF Delta-45, Rolling Thunder, swoop into the clearing, laying suppressive fire near SCP-6000. Chicago 1 and Chicago 2 are repelled up and safely recovered. End log. The sudden, unprovoked hostility from NX-01 and the transformation of the reconnaissance team into librarian, a punishment typically reserved for serious breaks in NX-001 law, has prompted an emergency council meeting the next day while MTF Delta-45 maintained the security perimeter outside SCP-6000. Chicago-1, Agent Adam McMillian, and Chicago-2, Director Tilda Moose, were evacuated to Facility 57, the ad hoc organizational facility for the containment of SCP-6000. Addendum 6000.3, Containment Response. Due to its relatively remote location, the th threat posed was not as significant as it could have been. Nevertheless, the possible threat of a permanent large Class W way on Earth was significant. On June 23rd, SCP Overcom, then known as the Overwatch Command, authorized the first series of containment and mitigation proposals for the in-situ containment of SCP-6000. These were packaged together as Project Fusilade. The designation of Facility 57 as the official containment facility for SCP-6000, the construction of a fence around the exclusion zone to deter wildlife and travelers, the requisition of resources for the long-term study of SCP-6000, arrest of known cells of GOI-14, the serpent's hand, Authorization of members of MTF Sigma-3 to aggressively seek out means of combating NX-001. Actually, wait, NX stands for Nexus. I should just say Nexus-001. Council vote summary. Yay. 051, 052, 053, 055, 057, 059, 0510, 0511, 0512, 0513. Nay. 054. And abstained, 055, and 056, I mean 058. Vote has been approved. Shortly after this, SCP 6000 A awoke from its containment, awoke from its comatose state during preliminary examination by medical personnel at Facility 57. It immediately attacked but was quickly disabled by security guards. While in containment, SCP 6000 A repeatedly referenced the Wanderer's Library in the Serpent's Hand. Due to her status as senior personnel with the most experience regarding Nexus 001, Director Moose was authorized to perform investigative interviews accompanied with arm by armed guards to gain information on the suspect. Begin log. 
Hello? A jailer. Slang used by members of Serpent's Hand Reference Foundation. Why? I hadn't been called that in a minute. Your hand, then? No. Maybe. I cannot remember. I see. Well, what do you remember? Floating in a void, dreaming, sitting under an apple tree, hearing something whisper stories into my ears, then waking up here on a cold metal table surrounded by men with knives. Sorry about that. You... So you don't remember how you found yourself like this? No. Is there something wrong with my appearance? Oh, you'll uh, take a look for yourself. Moose points at a mirror on the wall. SCP-6000-8 touches its face gingerly, running its fingers up and down its scales. Oh. So you didn't know. Uh, okay. No, this is... This is new. The voice did say it would mold me in its image, but... who Whose voice? I I don't know how long I was dreaming, but it was with me the whole time, dangling from the branches of the trees, murmuring tales and stories and myths, stories about jailers and book burners, the library itself. But you wouldn't know anything about that. I do, as it happens. I've been in the library many times. Well, I used to, anyway. Mm. I remember being told that some jailers could enter. Why is beyond me. Various reasons, information, travel, but there are quite a few restrictions. They're not allowed to help the rest of the Foundation contain anything. Is that not what you are doing to me? The situation has changed, to put it lightly. Ah, uh, the way, yes. So you know something about this. Tell me, and why would I do that? Because you've been cooperative enough because I went in and now six of my people have been torn apart by the librarians. Because you still have some humanity left over. Take your pick. Mmm. A trade. A story for a story. My mind is bursting with stories. But the only way to know a story is to tell it. What kind of story? Why don't you tell me the story about your last time in the library? I... What, why, why do you care about that? Because... I remember the feeling of the library, but I can't remember anything about it. Maybe you will awaken something. Control instructs Moose to cooperate. <sighs> I was in... Must have been 15 years ago by now. I was on the rocks with the hand. We didn't really agree on how we should go about improving the world that we live in. There's a section of the library, the Five Archives. I don't know if you remember I do. Great stone vaults filled with knowledge considered forbidden, even by the library standards, where new librarians are made, impossible to get to. Yeah, that's what they all said, but nothing's impossible if you know magic well enough. I spent, I spent months preparing, then to set the rituals alight. Only took a few minutes and then I was inside. Staff were none the wiser. I have never heard this story. What did you do? I took some things. Book. Maps of ways, lists, things that, given to the Foundation, would give them a tactical edge in dealing with the library. Then I left the way I came. You betrayed the library. Yeah. There's no other way to put it. Describe the place to me, then. The library? I, I, I'm hoping you already know, on some level. Trying to describe it to anyone who hasn't seen it is like trying to explain the difference between two colors to a blind man. It's utterly alien, foreign, beyond the cusp of understanding. It's it's wondrous and magic and bitter and spiteful. It's the center of the universe. Maybe it is. I wouldn't be surprised. That place is infinite. No, not infinite. Merely impossibly large. What's the difference? It's eternally expanding as new stories are written and new knowledge is found. It expands and consumes dead stories, stories that have ended to itself, to turn them into shelves for other stories so that something new may exist in their place. Huh. My story is about that a bit. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who woke up and found that she could spin fire. She lit toys, candles, and paper on fire until men with guns kicked down the door to her tenement and tried to take her away. That was when she learned she could also light people on fire, and found that it was much less fun. The she ran and ran until she met people, street witches and miracle makers who were just like her. 
They opened a door to a world where she could be herself without fear of reprisal. The library. Yes, she walked among shelves and saw the docents and read every single story she wanted. But she came across a problem. Every story ended. Some were short, some were long, but they all came to an end sooner or later. How is that a problem? It wasn't. Not really. But she couldn't stop thinking about the end of stories and one question always ringing out. What happened after? Did the characters struggle against their end? Or was it a calm affair? I can relate, but what does this have to do with us? I don't know. I'm still sorting through the stories. I simply pick that which seems to be relevant. But I'd look for the serpent's hand. They helped the girl. Maybe they can help you. Addendum 6000.4 Fusillade Responses <laughs> Upon SCP 6000 A's suggestion and in line with Project Fusillade on June 27, 2030, SCP Overcom approved Oper Operation Black Star for MTFs worldwide to make simultaneous raids on known headquarters of major Serpent's Hand cells. On June 28th, Operation Black Star was successfully executed. Hold on. MDF Pi-1, City Slickers, Fireteam Dragon, Shanghai, China. Translated from Mandarin. Begin log. Ready. Two. Take point. Affirmative. Three. Ready. Three, two, one. Breach. Go. Clear. 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 They're... they're gone. All 57 safe houses raided had been completely cleared out and were found free of GOI-14 members or materials. In 30 of them, Class W gateways were there and still active, leading to the same section of Nexus 001 as SCP-6000. By all appearances, the Serpent's Hand had completely abandoned the planet, leaving active ways peppered across the globe. At this point, SCP-6000 has grown to a kilometer across, and the exclusion zone had expanded to three kilometers. Director Tilda Moose was asked to prepare a statement detailing her thoughts of the situations for the O5 Council. Statement. I don't know what precipitated this, but if the library is turned against humanity, the situation is going to be dire. It's a completely alien entity to us. We can't even begin to understand what it is or why it does the things it does. Heck, we don't even know if there's a rhyme or reason to it. Most Foundation personnel only know of the library in the abstract, but I and a handful of others have actually stepped foot in the shelves and can tell you that it is at once humanity's greatest boon and its greatest threat. Imagine how much history has been influenced by people going into the libraries and bringing back knowledge they otherwise never would have had. Now imagine how fricked we'll be if the source of all knowledge in the universe turns on us. I don't see this story having a happy ending. T. Moose Director Moose has been temporarily relieved of her duties at Site-19 to consult on 6,000 containment efforts at Facility 57. Addendum 6,000.5, Fusillade Containment Efforts. An incident committee was hastily assembled at Facility 57 on January 19th. Members, Director Tilda Moose, Direct, uh, Agent Adam McMillian, MTF Sigma-5, Applied Force Liaison, Joseph Kurtz, Large Scale Containment Specialist, J. Vasquez, no, the Amazon is too high profile for that sort of thing. Have we considered the Atreus Array? Initial experiments out of the exclusion zone using SRAs on SCP-6000 seem to have no effect. Darn it, what the frick is this thing? It's a way. Ways aren't matter, and they're not quite energy, and we barely understand anything about them. Ways dissipate a few minutes after formation. It's been over a week and SCP-6000 has only gotten larger. None of the new ways have dissipated either. Something's obviously changed. Yes, but what? We have no idea and no leads. Well, not no leads. Oh, right, that snake thing you pulled up. What the heck is that thing's story? I, I don't know. It doesn't remember anything before we picked it up. It's definitely more connected to the library than it's letting on. Or that it remembers. Well, keep working on it. In the meantime, we've got new reports out of the exclusion zone detailing what SCP-6000 is doing to the flora and fauna. It's, well, 
I don't know how to phrase this. It's libraryifying everything around it. When I was there, I saw trees turning into shelves, writing appearing on leaves, that sort of thing, I bet. Essentially, the animals are also being distorted and changed. We spotted jaguars with extra limbs, birds two feet tall, and with writing all over their wings, etc. It's warping the landscape around it into part of the library. And the larger 6,000 gets, the larger the exclusion zone gets. Hmm, it's bad news. To say the least, that said, I do have some ideas that are worth trying. Let's hope one of them works. End log. Abridged fuselage containment attempt. Log. Proposed containment. Use flame and heat-based weaponry such as flamethrowers to incinerate trees affected by SCP-6000. Results? Affected trees within the exclusion zone prove resistant to heat-based weaponry, ra rapidly regenerating all burned matter. Proposal, proposed containment. Fire high-yield explosives into the mouth of SCP-6000. Results? Explosive repeatedly failed to detonate after crossing the threshold in a Nexus 001. Proposed containment. Train the Atreus Array, a satellite-based SRA system, upon SCP-6000 at full power. Results? SCP-6000 in the exclusion zone are completely unaffected. 34 entries abridged. Hi again. A jailer. Why do you keep calling me that? You're not Hand. You don't even remember the library. Oh, but I can. I remember some things now. Not everything, but hopefully it will come. Really, what is it? I remember being a young woman in the Dynadon's hand, searching for the warship in the night, searching for the warship of knowledge in the library and out. Warship, awfully religious for the hand. I know darn well. I ran with them for years. Really, and now you're a foundation director. What changed? I don't want to talk about it, but suffice to say that I realize maybe not all knowledge is meant to be shared. Anyway. You were saying? Yes. The Hand started out as a cult thousands of years ago. The Hand of the Serpent, a warrior cult dedicated to the worship of the serpent that created the library. The Serpent? Knowledge incarnate, the spirit of learning. The Naga, Jormungandr, the snake in the tree. Every mythical snake iconography is said to stem from the primal serpent. But no one knows if it's actually real. Shh. Let me finish my story, Jailer. The Hand were powerful, long-lived monks, but eventually died out, leaving their teaching behind. Theses, passages, essays on why the spread of knowledge was the greatest honor possible and should be done at all possible costs. Many years later, people from this world discovered these writings and christened themselves as the new Serpent's Head, the one that you and I know today. They shed the trappings of the ritual, but the worship of knowledge as an ideal remains. Wow. I, I had no idea about those origins. They never told me. Neither did I when I joined. This is a new story whispered to me by the serpent in my dreams. Wait, what? Draw lines and connect the dots, Jailer. The serpent is real. She is the spirit of the library and in the rich will circle over an intersection in the ley lines in the Amazon rainforest. I spoke to her. And you heard stories. And I heard stories of her singing the library into reality at the beginning of creation, of her molding its halls and then retiring to slumber under its foundations of exhaustion, of patrons wandering down and speaking to her, even now. Wow. And of stories utterly unrelated to her. Do any of these stories help me? Heroes of old figuring out how to stop the library when it goes insane and out of control, bent on destruction? Library is not supposed to kill or invade. It's beyond all that. It's neutral to a fault. I, I just don't understand why it's happening. No. No stories like that, Jailer. I'm sorry. But this is not how the story ends. Endings are mutable. Oh, no, that's not true. Endings are set in stone. But endings don't matter anyway. How's that? To any observer, your story ended when you betrayed the library and came to the foundation. But it didn't. You didn't stop existing. You just transitioned into a new narrative, one where you were the director of Site-19. That's not a narrative, it's my gosh darn life! I never finished my story, did I? The little girl read and read and read and read until one day she realized that she had already solved her problem. 
Of course they all ended, but she moved on to the next story. There were always more stories. No point in lamenting on what, on what was inevitable when she could just move on. <laughs> I wish it ran like that in real life. Yes, all the stories I see with the Foundation staring down into the end of the world, they all have the book burners by their side. I suppose it's something to say they're rivals allying themselves against a threat greater than either could imagine. Smoking ash, a fusillade of fire against a wall of trees. Wait, a fusillade? How did you go? Now. Addendum 6000.6 GOC inclusion. Per SCP 6000 A's statements, a vote was held on whether or not to, classify, to declassify details of SCP 6000, the surrounding situation, and Project Fusillade to liaisons of the United Nations Global Occult Coalition in exchange for assistance in containing and or terminating the anomaly. Council vote summary. Yay! 051, 052, 053, 055, 059, 0510, 0511, 0513. Nay, 054, 057. 058, 0513 again. Okay, I can't tell if that's supposed to be like, if that's a typo or, or if that's on purpose. Uh, and abstained, 056 and 0512. Uh, proposal approved. Diplomatic agents were employed to the GOC's operating headquarters in Germany for a prearranged meeting with material regarding the current status of SCP 6000 and associated subjects. Upon deliberation, GOC officials inked a statement indicating interest in expanding Project Fusillade to a joint venture. Within the following days, GOC physics, psyche, and Ptolemy division personnel were transported to Facility 57 to aid in research and containment of SCP-6000, which had grown to two kilometers across. Due to the unprecedented failure of Fireteam Chicago, both the O5 Council and GOC Command authorized a mission for GOC Strike Team 9842, the probable cause, to perform a rapid surgical strike in an attempt to gain access to the Wanderer's Library and ascertain the situation from the inside. GOC Strike Team 9842, the probable cause, code name Harbor. Agent Adam Million and Director Moose are advising from command. Begin log. Moving through the forest. Copy that. This place is fricked up, Command. All the trees are stripped and filled with books. They're empty, too. Just leather-bound blank pages. Take a sample? Negative, Harbor. Get in there. Get out ASAP. Roger. Contact! A large figure passes through the tree line ahead. Harbor drops to the ground, silent and unmoving. They remain there for a minute. Clear. Clear. What the frick was that thing, Command? It looked like a librarian. Class D. E-R. Uh, Class D. Er. Uh, known threat entity. D. Sorry, we're not used to the gawk slang. Roger. No worries, Skipper. Let's move. They're coming up on the TE now. Holy. Holy crap. It's huge. Estimate harbor, gotta be three, three and a half clicks minimum. Gotta be, uh, Roger. Any entities in sight? Negative. Moving. Harbor rushes from the tree line through SCP-6000 and into Nexus-001. We're in. You read? Yep. Remember, if you, if you can find anything or anyone that looks like it could answer some questions, Roger, going quiet. Harbor moves through the empty shelves of the library, progressively clearing corridors for several minutes. They eventually find a lectern holding a single, thin book. Got something. Harbor 3 moves to the lectern. The book's cover is green leather and has the title, In Progress, embossed onto it. Odd. Taking it. Roger. The same hissing, unidentified voice from Chicago's incursion is audible. You are not. <laughs> Who said that? Why are you here? Do not lie to me. For Harbor, Harbor, come in. We're, we're following orders. No. Why are you here? I, I, I don't know. Because you wanted to see what the other side of the fade was like. Don't worry, curiosity is a virtue. Once I saw a patron here. 
desperately consumed with questions about the logic of the library. He wanted to know how infinity worked, how it was possible that the library could be truly infinite. Where did the space come from? From stories, of course. The library takes finished stories onto its shelves and takes finished worlds into itself, often one and the same. You are book burners, but you are pure of heart. Little children ordered around by men who hate what is going to happen to their story. You are welcome here. All of you. And you survived for a reason. Both of you. After harbor signal cut out, SCP-6000 ex exhibited a rapid growth pattern, growing to nearly three kilometers in a matter of two hours. Foundation deep well solutions began being considered. Addendum 6000.7, veil failure. Following Operation Harbor, Harbor, several radio signals began broadcasting from SCP-6000 in all ways found during Operation Black Star at various frequencies. The message contained therein was the same hissing feminine voice repeating the exact coordinates of SCP-6000's epicenter and the phrase, the garden is the serpent's place. Within hours, the larger global community has discovered the signal and it began to quickly accure attention online through the media sufficient, despite sufficient foundation efforts to impede its decision. Aethagon Gang Lead 6th of July 2042 Wednesday um, Sorry, I don't speak military time. <laughs> you guys seen the pictures coming out of Brazil? MSM is probably going to get a hold of it by tomorrow and suppress the story, but it is insane. I have no clue what the heck is going on in the Amazon, but the pictures make it look like it's some sort of oil slick. <laughs> it's kind of beautiful. Wall Street Journal, the Amazon Anomaly. Arctic Abode. Uh, hold on. Bro, they're formatted weird. Okay. Uh, June 7th. All right. So, Aethagon Gang Leads post was June 7th, 2042. Then, Arctic Abode uh, posts on... June 11th, 2042, Thursday. 2 OP. Yep, turns out I'm not nuts. My friends have been hearing it through their car radios and HM and HAMs too. A woman's voice, some sort of sort of nasally, repeating words and numbers. Coordinates, I think. The words, the garden is the serpent's place. Sounds biblical. Maybe a passphrase of some sort. Now, here's the kicker. If you look on Google Earth or anything really for those coordinates everything's fine it it doesn't show anything out of the ordinary but if you use a backdoor to get into the wildlife observation cameras scattered around cameras went offline immediately after but i think they managed to save this but i managed to save this image I'm starting to think that i should go down there this could be big the guardian brazil under lockdown containment efforts contribute Containment efforts simply contributed to individuals' belief in a conspiracy and eventually resulted in several individuals attempting to reach the exclusion zone on foot over the following weeks. While individuals were amnestized, amnesticized, the larger movement surrounding SCP-6000 continued and is continuing to grow. The knowledge of SCP-6000's presence to the global community seemed to rapidly accelerate its growth. In the following hours, it expanded to nearly 6 kilometers across with no signs of stopping. GOC tactical nuclear solutions are being considered. In addition, on January 21st, Agent McMillian failed to appear to several fuselade briefings and meetings. A search for his quarters at Facility 57 revealed a thaumaturgic ritual circle drawn onto the floor. Surveillance camera footage displayed him spending an hour, an hour the night before and crafting the circle before performing a ritual of unclear purpose, Agent McMillian's thaumaturgic capabilities were believed to be burnt out, and disappearing from his corners at 7.55 a.m. local time. Surveillance footage from the exclusion zone showed a sudden burst of light at the same time, and a glimpse of McMillian moving through the foliage, presumably into SCP-6000. 
The following note was left in her quarters in a sealed envelope addressed to Director Moose. Sorry, Tilly. I used to spend weeks in the library shelves perusing everything I could come across. It was otherworldly in the most literal sense of the word. I'm sure you get the feeling. The difference is that you couldn't go in. You made the choice between the library and the foundation. When I first entered, it was a mission. I experienced something amazing, something well beyond what I thought was ever possible. And I thought it was a darn shame that we had looked at something so magnificent only to be worried about how it might hurt us. I can see now that's not the case. Librarians are only hurting people that try and stop the expansion, but I have no intention of doing that. This is the end of the story, not one where we can somehow come up with a silver bullet to fix everything. The only thing I can do is change how I feel about it. I just want to sit in the shelves and see the false stars again. I think this is my happy ending. A.M. Jeez, you knew, didn't you? How the story would end? Of course, I've been telling you that. What? I told you right at the start. This isn't that kind of story. You don't find a silver bullet to fix everything, Jailer. That's not how it goes. Well. I'm not going to roll over and die. I don't know why I'm even talking to you. You sent four good men to their deaths. No, no, I didn't. No one has died, Jailer. Weren't you listening to the serpent? What did you say? You already knew in your heart. What else could it have been? Adam. I, I don't know. He abandoned the rest of us. No, he didn't. I tire of telling you things that you already know. Then tell me something I don't know. Explain everything to me. I wish I could. Explaining it to you would be like... You don't scream into your book when the characters frustrate you. You can't do anything. You have to watch it play out. So what, is this just entertainment to you? No. Stories aren't always entertainment. When I communed with the serpent in search of knowledge, knowledge was what I received, just in the form of stories. All that knowledge, every story it could remember. The GOC story, Adam's story, your story. And tell me how it ends. Tell me so I can know I did everything I possibly could to stop him. You already know, Moose. Denial fixes nothing. I learned it as a little girl, and you'll learn it now. You don't get to pick your ending. You only get to choose how you take it. So the girl was you, then? Yes. Even I didn't realize until now. The memories have come back, and I came to a ritual wanting to know how my story ended, and I learned how this world's story ended. Luckily for me, they were one and the same. Stories are bullcrap. Stories are all there is. This one ends with two people sitting in a room, talking, and they vanish into thin air. Sobering. In a sense, you should be flattered. Why in the world would I be flattered? You left the library on your terms, and you won't admit it to anyone, but I see it written in your face. You want to see it again. Like, heck, I do. It's wondrous, but everyone talks about it like a paradise. It screwed me long before I screwed it. Bitterness has gotten you nowhere. That's true. I have work to do. Rot, then. Addendum 6000.8, ongoing containment attempts. With unprecedented failure of the Veil Protocol... And the ensuing response by Nexus 001, the entire Amazon Basin has been quarantined and put into Foundation GOC jurisdiction under Project Fusilade. Project Fusilade. SCP-6000 is now expanded to 13 kilometers in length, and its rate of growth has increased. At the moment, plans are being drafted for a BM-class broken masquerade scenario. And, well, guess we're going to update to the latest revision. Oh, it's different now. Project Fusilade, SCP Foundation, GOC, Joint Clearance Passcode, Garden Serpent's Place, Level 1, Level 1, 6000 classified, item number SCP-6000, Object Class, Apollyon, SCP-6000, Aerial Shot, Special Containment Procedures, Containment of SCP-6000 failed. All Foundation Fusilade personnel left on Earth should report to their site's HMCL supervisor to receive further instructions. Description. 
SCP-6000 is a section of Earth that has been transformed into a section of the extra-dimensional location known as the Wanderer's Library. Currently, SCP-6000 covers the entirety of the Western Hemisphere and is increasing in size. SCP-6000 transformations began in the Amazon Basin in South America and continued across the entire hemisphere in the following weeks, despite joint Foundation GOC efforts under Project Fusilade to banner its impeding progress. All population centers, Foundation, GOC, and Fusilade sites inside SCP-6000 are considered lost. Veil protocol is to be disregarded. Currently, containment of SCP-6000 involves evacuating Fusilade personnel to be designated involves evacuating fusilade personnel to designated extra-dimensional background site backup sites. SCP-6000 covers 58% of the Earth's surface and is actively growing. Projections indicate it will cover the entire planet within two and two and a half weeks. Addendum 6001, 6000.1, final log. The following was an the following was the final audio log recorded and broadcast from Facility 57 before it was completely subsumed into SCP-6000. It was believed that all personnel and useful anomalies had been evacuated, but investigation revealed that Director Moose had never boarded any of the evacuation choppers in the chaos. After this audio file's final recording, both figures disappeared from Facility 57 biometric scanners. Seconds later, the facility was assumed by SCP-6000. So, what happens now? What do you mean? We wait. What else is there to do? Nothing, I suppose. We wait. Then what are you worried about? I'm not sure. You really shouldn't worry, you know. And why is that? Leaving the world is not as scary as it sounds. I think you're understating what's about to happen. What's about to happen, then? This is what always happens. This... this is natural. No, no. To heck with that. There's nothing natural about this. The world is being eaten alive. We are sitting and watching the apocalypse, and we can't do anything about it. Do you think there's going to be anything after this? I don't believe in God, if that's what you're asking. Anyone who works at the Foundation and still believes in God has more faith than the Pope. That's not what I'm asking. What do you think is going to happen after the way covers the world? There's just going to be nothing? Of course, it's subsuming the world. Replacing it. That's where you're wrong. What? I don't know how to mimic a cigarette lighting sound. Uh, I don't understand, Director. You know, on a logical level, that the sun is going to burn out one day. You go through every day of your life through the motions, knowing that there is a shelf life on the universe. There is always an ending. Yeah, yeah, but those are natural. The slow, agonizing heat death of the universe, watching every star go dark one by one, as they no longer find themselves capable of exploding into existence. What makes that any more natural than this? This has always been the Foundation's fatal flaw, an inability to adapt and survive. That changes nothing. It changes everything, Tilda. We all live and work knowing nothing goes on forever. But we don't let knowing that there is an end ruin the story for us. And here's the final part that matters. S there are always more stories. I, I, I don't understand. The library is all stories. Where there was once one story about a foundation and their valiant stand down with the end of the world, there will be a thousand million new stories and a thousand million new worlds inside them. The library doesn't just connect all worlds. It is all the worlds. Every world a story, every story a world, and everything that matters. So it's not out of control. This is just the end of a story and we're becoming part of the library. I suppose you could put it that way. Didn't you want to visit the library again? You seemed like you missed it. Agent McMillian certainly did. Now, come on. Unlock these handcuffs. You don't want to miss the end of the world, do you? What? So... What? N n nothing I, or Adam, or anyone could have done would have stopped it? it? It was just pointless? 
<sighs> the point was that the same was the same thing that it's ever been to make new stories where there was once nothing be happy tilda your story is going to be remembered forever oh boy choose your own adventure all right i think i'm going to choose this one first actually no no i'm not i'm going to do this one first because i feel like that one's going to be kind of meta so i'll save it for later Uh, loading okay well we're still on the SCP wiki SCP 6000 smiled a snake like laugh and waggled a finger at her through its handcuffs director we've been over this you don't get to pick the ending of a story she looked down but you do get to pick how you decide to take it you can sit down and weep that the same old stories you grew to love are gone, or you can smile and move on to the next shelf. She looked back up. They weren't in holding cell B9918 anymore. They were standing between two gargantuan bookshelves that seemed to go on forever before suddenly diverging into more bookshelves. Every space was filled with the spine of a different book, massive tomes to paper-thin leaflets. There were people of all shapes and sizes in robes sitting there, perusing the collection. The sky was a black void dotted with constellations, and she could smell the scent of fresh paper. Welcome home, jailer. SCP-6000-A was gone. In its place was a young Asian woman, maybe five feet tall, with a tattoo of a snake wrapped around a wrist on her face. She found her voice again. H how? How? I've been telling you. The library is the end of your story, but that doesn't have to be a bad thing. Because you get to move on to the next story. She gestured around her and a few of the other patrons looked up. A few shrugged off their hoods. Adam, and Vasquez, and Kurtz, and Bardem, and Flores, too. She thought she could even see some of the O5s in the crowd. The end isn't death, Tilly. You were stubbornly clinging on to that idea for too long. There, there will be new stories, M more, more worlds with the foundation, with, with me, everything we fought for, everything we did. There already are. So, she reached over and pulled out a book with a soft gray cover. The f front was embossed with SCP-6000 in ornate lettering. Get to reading. And that links to uh, series seven. Okay. She looked around at the impossibly huge library. In the distance, she spotted the same giant insect that had greeted him Him, when the fire team first was in. It waved a pincer at her. This is it. This is what? My happy ending. I don't know what this links to. Oh, this just links back to the beginning. Okay. Uh... All right, so that, I guess that's the good ending. Now what about the bad ending? Okay, still in the Wanderer's Library. But it's different. This has a yellow thing. I don't know what that means. Uh, we're not really on the Wanderer's Library. It's just SCP that looks like the Wanderer's Library. SCP six thousand A smiled in a snake like smiled a snake like laugh and waggled her finger at her through its handcuffs. Director, we've been over this. You don't get to pick the ending of a story. She looked down. But you do get to pick how you decide to take it. You can sit down and weep at the old stories grew to love are gone, and you can smile and move on to the next shelf. They weren't holding cell B-19 anymore. They were standing between two gargantuan bookshelves seeing to go on every space filled with the spine of different book, massive tones, paper thin leaflets, people, shapes, sizes, robes, here and there, perusing collections. Sky was black, dotted with constellations, sent fresh paper. Welcome home, jailer. 6000A was gone. It's place, a young Asian woman, five feet tall, tattoo of a snake wrapped around her wrist on her face, found her voice again. How? I've been telling you, the library isn't the end of your story, but that doesn't have to be a bad thing, because you get to move on to the next story. She just ran her. Adam, Vasquez, Curse, Barton, Flores, O5s, and isn't death. 
Stubbornly clinging on. New stories. Worlds. Foundation. Me. Everything we fought for. Everything we did. And there already is. 6,000 ornate lettering. Get to reading. Links to series 7. Shook around with a possibly huge library. Same giant insect. They agreed to him. Uh, I think this is what, this is what my happy ending. Which links back to the beginning of the article. So. Uh. Yeah, that, that was um, SCP-6000, The Serpent, the Moose, and the Wanderer's Library by, I guess, Yurt. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I was just, for, for for now, I'll just try and, like, read one, re read ones I, I kind of feel like uh, reading. This one's still an hour long. But <laughs> I thought this one would be shorter. Uh, so anyway, yeah. Uh, definitely more 6,000 content to come in the in the future. So uh, that that's that. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.